An F1 car sparking has to be one of the most visually pleasing things for an F1 fan, apart from a side-by-side -side battle for the lead, I'd say. Seeing the pinnacle of motorsport machinery creating firework-like displays from the rear ends is simply a scintillating watch. But how does this happen? And do you know the difference between the sparks created back in the 80s and the sparks now? No? Well, you've come to the right place to find out. Sparks started to become a regular feature of F1 in the late 1980s where teams would run their cars as low to the ground as possible to try and maximise downforce. And when the cars were full of fuel, they'd regularly bottom out producing a shower of sparks, and tracks were a bit bumpier back then. It made for some spectacular moments. Mansell and Senna at Barcelona in 1991, millimetres apart, sparks flying and people on the edge of their seats. If you watched the opening laps of any race from the late 1980s, early 1990s, you'd see plumes of sparks flying all over the place. Mansell once even said he'd deliberately seek out bumps to try and shower the driver behind him in sparks to try and distract them, which is massively cheeky. Makes me think of some Mario Kart antics, to be honest. On occasion, the sparks could also leave small burn marks on the visors. Following Imola 1994, the FIA mandated that the floor of all cars be fitted with a 10mm thick skid block or plank to prevent teams from running the cars too low. If this was worn by more than 1mm at the end of the race, signalling that the car's ride height was probably too low, the driver would face disqualification. This happened to Schumacher at Spa that year, costing him the win. To mount the plank, they would use bits of metal, usually made from Kevlar, known as skid blocks. In 2015, this material was changed, with the FIA mandating that it had to be made from titanium. It's believed that this was done in an effort to bring back sparks, make the cars look more spectacular and improve the show. But that just wasn't the case. Before 2015, teams discovered that by using hard-wearing metals and placing them strategically on the plank, they could run the cars lower so that when they bottomed out, they'd hit the metal rather than the plank without risking wearing it away too much. These bits of metal could also fragment and cause punctures, which became a bit of a safety risk. This is where the titanium comes in. It wears away much faster than the previous metals used, forcing teams to be a bit more careful with their ride heights, as well as it being much lighter and safer than what was used before. As a bonus, it also produces a nice dose of sparkage when it grinds along the asphalt. Is sparkage a word? Of course, despite the intention to prevent teams from running their cars too low to the ground, teams will know exactly how much bottoming they can get away with, which is why we still see the sparks today, especially when the cars are at their heaviest at the start of a race. It looks pretty cool at most tracks, but the awesomeness ramps up a whole new level at night where the sparks fly. So there you have it, an answer to why F1 cars spark. Are you a fan of the cars sparking? Do you like the word spark? I've used it a lot in this video. If you're not, do you have something against fireworks? Because they are awesome. Let us know in the comments section below.